Hi, this is Andy from Edelweiss Interactive with an introduction to safe coroutines. Coroutines in Unity have several weaknesses that we try to overcome with this implementation. When you create a coroutine, it is usually terminated at a certain point. Stopping them requires you to call string-based methods and is this still not guaranteed to work in all the cases. On the other hand, safe coroutines provide you with a flexible solution. They are based on states and you can easily switch between them as shown in this diagram. Whenever you start a safe coroutine, it is going to be in the running state. From here you may pause and then resume it. Stopping a safe coroutine, this one over here, is straightforward. It can be performed on any safe coroutine that is either running or paused. This is a major advantage compared to the Unity approach. The usual termination as seen over here is certainly also possible. If you are using a generic safe coroutine, you may even return a result of that generic type. If an exception is thrown during the execution of a safe coroutine, it changes the state to through exception. In that case, you can query the exception that was thrown to understand what went wrong in order to react appropriately. Keeping track of the state of a safe coroutine can either be done by constantly inspecting it using a reference or by subscribing to the state change notifier of the safe coroutine. But let's have a look at the examples to get a better understanding. The first thing to note is that we are operating in the edelweiss.coroutine namespace because there's all the safe coroutine functionality. When you start a coroutine in Unity it looks as follows. Start coroutine and then the method you want to execute as a coroutine. This would be like that. Uh, we are using extension method to operate directly in the mono behavior um, environment or in the mono behavior class. So, as we are using extension methods, we have to use this, and then we consciously don't use star coroutine, but we want to distinguish and make directly clear we are using safe coroutines. That's why the syntax for us to uh, start a safe coroutine looks like that. And additionally, we can also take the reference to this coro safe coroutine. Let's have a closer look at the example. We have two instance variables here to keep track of the safe coroutine. We start two time, this coroutine two times. The, the functionality of the coroutine is very interesting. We only wait for the next frame and this each time. On GUI, we just show the state of it and then in here we make some some buttons to control the state changes so what we do is we allow you to stop the save coroutine we allow you to pause it and to resume it so let's switch to unity and have a look at this we pick simple save coroutine and start it over here we can see first of all the first coroutine is running and the second one as well. We can individually pause them and as we pause them the state certainly changes. It's also possible to stop them individually. The stopping I just performed um, would not be that trivial in Unity in general. So with Unity coroutines you can't actually stop them in 
in a random order you are kind of locked I, I can't remember which one it is uh, whether it's the, the first starter coroutine that can be stopped or the last one I, I don't know I don't care because yeah I find it a little confusing so this was the first example let's go to the next one which is a result returning one in the previous example we were using safe coroutine this time we are using a generic one with where the generic parameter is of type float that means we are returning a result of type float in awake we started in the usual way and in on GUI we can actually set a flag and as soon as we set this flag which is this one over here in the coroutine and then we yield return uh, the number P it's important to note that we are not just returning it but we have to yield return it and to be sure that the coroutine finishes afterwards we also call break to leave the while loop here let's quickly have a look at this one result returning as soon as I click it changes the state from running to finished and we see the result down here which is P so perfect next one that would be exception throwing the exception throwing example is pretty similar to the result returning one but instead of returning a result when the flag is set we throw an exception the exception we are throwing is invalid operation exception and the message is you are not allowed to click that button if we are in the three exception state we also output a little bit of those informations that we are sure yeah okay everything worked as expected let's start it so we are throwing an exception and what happens is we see it was an invalid operation exception and the message is you are not allowed to click that button just as expected and over here in the console you can see directly there is no message being uh, shown in here even if an exception was thrown so next one next one is notification um, as I said earlier we also have the possibility to subscribe to um, state change notifications what we do we create the co safe core routine as we did it before um, we are not using this time an instance variable but a local variable because well, we don't need to keep track of it because at the end uh, we get we we can get it as an argument when we subscribe so when we subscribe we call the, the reference and then dot generic state change notifier generic is only needed um, for generic safe coroutines and we subscribe this method which is the one down here and as you see in here the signature is first the safe coroutine then the state we could optionally just have the state but in this case we need it in order to read the result so again um, or no let's quickly check this one out here we wait one second and after this second we return uh, the number P and we output it in the console so the simple notifier is here let's start it we wait one second and here we go in the console after about one seconds uh, or after one second um, the result P was returned so perfect just what we expected let's go into the next one this is also a notification example in here you see that if we are dealing with a usual 
safe coroutine and not with the generic one the subscription is state change notifier and not generic state notifier as we need it for the generic variants and yeah this one here is not too funky uh, we just wh what we are doing is when down here you can see it we just have a, me a message string and whenever the state changes we actually add a line to this message and we show it then in the in ongui i think yes it's in yes down here in ongui we show it as a label let's quickly have a look at it which the notifier so as we change it we always get a message with each change we get a message that's yeah that's all not too funky actually and now a little bit more interesting one which is nested coroutines coroutines or sorry to be precise safe coroutines can be nested in this example we create an outer coroutine and in this one we yield the inner coroutine the inner coroutine has a timer on and it just counts such that we can see when it is actually active so on awake we start the outer coroutine and within this outer coroutine we yield the inner one so the inner coroutine is started as well and we yield return it and in here you see the inner coroutine has just a timer and each frame it adds time dot delta time to to it and down here is just the usual GUI stuff we already did in the previous examples or in one of the previous examples let's have a look at how this works so we have the outer coroutine that is running we have the inner coroutine that is running and the timer is constantly going up when I pause the inner coroutine the timer is not anymore counting and you see that the inner coroutine is paused because it is itself paused there's two kinds of pausing actually if I pause the outer coroutine you can see that the outer coroutine is itself paused while the inner coroutine is parent paused that means it is not itself paused but paused because the parent um, safe coroutine is paused um, as a side note it can the inner coroutine can be parent paused and also um, self paused at the same time and you see the combinations are really it doesn't matter what kind of combination we are using uh, the counter is only uh, going upwards or increasing when both of the coroutines both of the safe coroutines are running so if I stop the in run the counter certainly doesn't go on and it doesn't matter what I'm doing with the outer one So if we pause the outer one, the inner one is paused as well. The same is true for stopping. If I stop the outer one, the inner coroutine is also stopped. This is just a consistent application of, of this rule. Let's go to the very last example, which is an, a limitation. I won't actually show you the code because it's exactly the same as before but this time the inner coroutine is not a safe coroutine but a unity coroutine and this is just here to show you that this combination doesn't work so if you have an outer coroutine which is a safe coroutine and an inner coroutine which is a unity coroutine then you have no control over the unity coroutine I can actually pause the outer one and as you see the timer doesn't care about it I can even stop 
and nothing happens in here. I just want to, I just want to clarify that this combination doesn't work but it's not important because as soon as I switch and I have a flag down here to switch it to a safe core routine so the inner one is now again um, a safe core routine and it, in that case it works this is really just to demonstrate you please don't do it this because it will not work as expected okay let's go back to the diagram um, we showed you all states here we showed you examples for all those states it's relatively simple to use um, I'm looking forward to reviews of you I hope you enjoyed you I hope you enjoyed the video and thanks for watching